Welcome to PF Diagnose, a little bit of a walkthrough here. So let's start PF Diagnose. The first thing we need to do is make sure we're using the correct adapter. To do this, we can select the Change button, go in and make sure the protocol, J1708, this is for older uh, engines, 2011, 2010, and older, uh, or J1939 for newer engines and some older engines. This is where things get a little bit confusing for most people. J1708 is the old protocol. J1939 is the new protocol. Now, many engines use a combination of both the old and the new protocol. When they added things like emissions, DPF filters, and so forth, Rather than rewrite the entire truck, they just added the new protocol. So in this case, you will want to use both J1708 and J1939. In order to accomplish this, you'll see a checkbox here. This checkbox allows you to connect with both J1708 and J1939. You must also select the proper adapter. The picture here, in this case, we're using a DPA5. And if you're going to connect with OBD2, you must select the protocol for OBD2 and over here, the J2534 pass-through device must also be selected and it is the same device that you're using for the RP1210. Now, in this case, we're going to connect with J1708. We're going to use both J1708 and J1939 as the protocol. So we'll save that for the DPA5. Now we're ready to connect. Our adapter is connected to the vehicle, the ignition is turned on, and we're going to hit the connect. So as you see, everything comes up pretty quick. This is a Cummins engine, but the model has not been selected. So in order to get the correct troubleshooting, we must select the correct model of engine. In this case, we're going to select an ISB CM2150. You'll see that the codes change and the flash codes appear. In order to get troubleshooting for one of these codes, let's try this code for example. We select the code. Down below, if there are any uh, freeze frame information, it'll show up here. This is the information that was captured uh, when the code was activated. Highlight the code, double click, and select Diagnostic Help. Diagnostic Help for this code will appear. If it is available, it will appear. If it does not appear, it may not be available. Uh, we do not have all of the information, but we try to get as much as we can. Now, this is good for the engine code. But what about a body code? And I've had people ask me about that before. What happens when I get a, uh, a body fault? How do I get the correct information? Well, first of all, you must make sure that the correct body module is selected here. So in this case, it's a Freightliner. We'll select Freightliner. Uh, and then any body codes for a Freightliner should come up correct. If it's an international, then you would select international here, and then any body codes for an international should be correct. You may have to hit the update button over here. Detected modules is a section used for modules that have been detected on the vehicle. This is uh, a routine that is run periodically. It may take some time for all of the modules to show up in this list. In some cases, an ECM, for example, will have a built-in retarder, so it will show a built-in retarder as well as an emissions controller and perhaps the engine ECM. It, it is actually one physical ECM, but it has three sub-ECMs in it. The connection speed just indicates the speed at which you're being uh, connected to the vehicle with using the DPA5 or whatever adapter you've selected. ABS is the type of ABS that the vehicle has. If this has not been selected and you know that you have a WAPCO ABS system, uh, select that. Any fault codes that come up for ABS will then be correct. 
transmission you can select what type of transmission that you have and again any fault codes that come up for the transmission will be uh, more accurate because it'll look it in, in look up the code in the proper table HD parked regen this is a momentary contact switch when you click the switch it will activate for a period of 20 or 30 seconds or so and then it will shut itself off this is a normal function what this is doing is requesting the engine do a parked regen if that function is supported in the engine the regen will initiate if it is not selected it will just ignore it if you're connected to an OBD2 vehicle you have to select the regen from the OBD2 test um, selection in the menu this is for only for OBD2 uh, vehicles such as a Hino or a uh, Fuso or Isuzu for example you cannot do an OBD2 forced regen on a Cummins in a uh, Dodge for example it, it just won't work some of the other features you'll find are gauges temperatures and you can switch between Fahrenheit and Celsius the DTC's that we just went through monitor which uh, will display active uh, PIDs now you'll notice some of the PIDs are not displayed these PIDs must be requested you'll see an indication over here with an REQ which re which means request in order to view these values you must request them you do so by checking the box and wait a few seconds they are low priority uh, values so they will not appear immediately and as soon as the ECM has had time to request the information and get the values back they will be displayed here some values are not available for example this vehicle does not have a windshield washer fluid level um, sensor therefore requesting the fluid level will uh, yield no response it will just sit there you'll see now the values are available uh, for the uh, for the cruise limits now you'll also notice that these values are only available in the J1708 column not the J1939 column again this is an older vehicle and the uh, vehicle is in the middle of being transitioned between J1708 and J1939 so some of the information is available on J1708 and some of the information is available on J1939 readiness is an OBD2 function you will not find very much here when connected to a heavy-duty truck emissions these are PIDs that are specific to emissions trip information specific to trip trip information fuel specific to fuel usage and J1939 LPG a J1939 LPG is for a uh, LPG or liquid petroleum gas or propane truck engine down here you must select gas and then use this column to connect to a propane powered truck powertrain integrations is currently the only truck company I know of that uh, manufactures the en the engine so if you're connected to an engine from powertrains uh, international then you could use this function to properly read the engine for most cases this will be set to diesel and you will not use that tab you will use the monitor tab to uh, monitor your live data on this column here you can select the PIDs that you want to graph this graph will only graph the primary protocol so if you recall earlier when we went into the change and we selected J1708 as the primary protocol and then check the box so that we can also receive the J1939 data this graph however will only display J1708 
If you want this graph to display J1939, you have to go back into the settings and select J1939 as the primary protocol. Then the graph will respond to the to the J1939 PIDs. Again, you can keep uh, stay tuned to our channel here and look for any information and videos. We're going to try and do uh, as many videos as we can to uh, make the uh, use of the software easier for you and it's always easier to watch a video than it is to try and read through some information. Uh, at least I find that uh, videos are a lot more helpful. So we're going to go ahead and do that for you and hopefully it'll make your experience a lot better. Thank you very much and have a great day.